is Oak House Nursery School and these are the plans that have been approved for a new extension to be built there. My name is Martin and I am the project manager. That's me on the right. I'm having a meeting with Jeff the architect and the building inspector to check that they are happy for me to start the build. Luckily everything looks fine and we're ready to go. The first thing we need is a digger as the site must be cleared. This means removing the swings from the old playground. To make sure that the site is safe and secure, so I put up fencing all around and clear signs to remind everybody of the danger. Steve then uses the digger to level the site by clearing away some of the topsoil. The next job is to dig the foundations, so he looks at the plans and makes marks on the ground where the outside walls will be. To make sure these will be strong, he digs into the ground making trenches. These must be the same depth and width all the way around, so they are continually checked with a special measuring stick. It's very important that these trenches are perfectly straight and not too wide, so Peter has to be very careful. Once all the trenches are dug, they are filled with concrete. This is brought to site on a special lorry that has a giant mixing drum on the back. The drum moves around and keeps the concrete moist and moving. Because although it looks very sloppy and wet right now, it will soon set and become rock hard. Whilst the concrete is still wet, it has to be raked out and tapped level. The following day, the concrete blocks I had ordered from the builder's yard arrived. Luckily, the concrete in the trenches had set before all the rain came. Once the weather had cleared, the builder's yard were able to load up all the other things I had ordered. It didn't take long before the building sand and red bricks arrive on site. Oh. 
Now we have all the materials on site, so the bricklayers Marius and Lucas are able to start building the walls. The blocks are put on top of the concrete foundation and are stuck together with mortar. Like the concrete, it is sloppy and wet now, but will dry hard and hold the blocks in place. When laying blocks or bricks, it's important to make sure they are straight and level. To help with this, they're using lines of string as a guide. Once they have built three courses of blocks, they need to cover the soil with a special stone and sand mix. It's called aggregate. The aggregate is then spread out and covered with a blue plastic waterproof sheet, followed by a layer of insulation boards that are cut to fit. More concrete is then poured over the top of this and patted level. deep trenches and this big concrete slab, the building has good, strong foundations. Once the concrete is dry, the walls start to go up and the wooden outlines of the doors and windows are put into place. Marius and Lucas are very careful to keep the block straight and they use a spirit level to help them. The block work goes up very quickly and you can soon see how the internal white bricks and the grey external blocks are filled with more insulation board. Once all the downstairs walls are up, wooden beams are placed from one side to the other. These are called joists. As the building gets higher, scaffolding is put around it so that the blocks can be laid even higher. This is harder work for Lucas as he has to lift all the blocks up one by one. Here he is mixing the mortar in a cement mixer. This is then put into a bucket and carefully carried up the ladder. Soon the scaffolding is raised again and a steel beam is fixed from one end of the old building to the end of the new building. Wooden joists are then fixed to it, showing the outline of the roof. And from the inside, you can start to see what the rooms will look like. The building is really starting to take shape now and the next job is to fix a blue waterproof sheet over the joists. Wooden battens are cut and nailed down to keep it in place. These battens are also used to fix the roof tiles too. Sometimes the tiles need to be cut and this is done with an electric circular saw. Once the roof tiles are on, it is time to put in the windows. The doors are also fitted and together they make the building watertight. It soon becomes very busy inside as the electricians start fitting and cutting the wires for the plugs and lights. Every connection is carefully checked because electricity can be very dangerous. The wires seem to be everywhere 
but in fact they are all linked up to a special box called a fuse board. More of the board insulation is used between the wooden joists upstairs and downstairs the gap between the joists is filled with soft insulation roll. Kevin and Scat are now sorting out these big sheets. They are called plasterboards. The plasterboards will be fixed to the ceiling and they will keep the insulation in place. They will also act as a nice flat surface for the ceiling. Outside, Brian is covering the walls with a special mix called Render. The Render sticks to the walls. The building will need two layers of this. Once the first layer is in place, Kevin runs a special tool over the top. The lines will help the second layer to stick better. The render will help to protect the building and after the second layer is added, Brian scrapes off any lumps and uses a special tool called a float to flatten the surface. Finally, he uses a sponge to give a perfectly smooth finish. Inside, Brian covers the walls and ceilings with a different mix called plaster. This is a very skillful job as the walls must be perfectly smooth. Luckily, Brian has been doing this for many years and knows exactly what he is doing. As the plaster dries, it changes color and it is then ready to be painted. Kevin uses a small brush for the more detailed painting jobs around the switches and in the corners. He then refills the tray and uses a roller for the bigger areas. This is much quicker. While Kevin is painting, the wooden flooring and carpets are being laid. Here, the skirting boards are being fitted. The staircase has been made in the carpenter's workshop. He brings it round in his lorry and it's soon in place. The plumbers are also on site and their job is to fit the toilets and sinks. They use these pipes to bring clean water into the building and connect them to the taps and toilets. They then connect the white wastewater pipes to the plug holes to take the dirty water away. Downstairs the kitchen has been fitted and lots of the furniture has arrived. All of the boxes they arrived in are played with by the children before being flattened and sent to be recycled. Outside the building has been painted to match the rest of the school. Robert and Ben, the landscape gardeners, are laying the paving at the front door and once finished, they move round the back to build a raised wooden deck next to the folding doors. When finished, it is covered with soft black rubber tiles.
The building work is now finished. The inside is soon filled with all the toys and chairs the children will need in their classrooms. To celebrate a job well done, we had a grand opening. I opened some champagne and Owen the plumber helped to pour some drinks for the teachers. My job as project manager was done and in five months I had taken the original plans and worked out what needed to be done. From the removal of the swings to how many bricks and blocks we needed to build the walls, how steep the angle of the roof should be and where the plug socket should be placed. I think the end result looks brilliant and I hope the children and teachers will enjoy their new classrooms for years to come.